So inverse functions are basically, well, think about inverses. You know, add and subtract are inverses of one another, right? And multiply and divide, a square and a square root, cube and a cube root, right? All of these things undo each other, don't they? Okay. So it's the same thing with the sine, cosine, and tangent stuff, and then the inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. Okay. Now instead of seeing inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, they also like to use this phrase called arc sine, which basically means inverse of sine. Okay. Another way you might see it is they might use the inverse notation. If you remember from college algebra, that was how we would write the inverse. If you had a function f of x, its inverse was f inverse of x, right? That was not a negative one exponent, which would be a fraction. No, it was not. It was how we denoted inverses, okay? So you will see web assign, and if you're reading your textbook, your textbook as well, and the questions that we cover in class will interchange those different uh, notations. Okay, so you will see arc sign sometimes, and then sometimes you'll see sign inverse. Okay, they're just going to use them as they feel like using them. It doesn't really matter. It's the exact same thing. Okay, so if I see this, even in this problem, right, you have one that says arc sign and the other two that have the inverse notation, it doesn't make a difference. Okay, it's all the same. Basically, what they're trying to figure out is they're trying to figure out what did you take the sign of to get whatever's inside here. Okay, so I usually like to rewrite them in their equivalent forms. It's the same as back in the day when we did this. I should use this letter. I'm going to use this letter. This was the same thing as saying f of x equals y. Okay. All they did was put the f on that side with the x, didn't they? And then it no longer was an inverse. Okay. It's the same thing here. You're going to put the sign on this side, and then there's no longer this sign inverse on that side. Okay. Same here. Put the sign over there, and then there's no longer a sign on this side. Okay. So they're just rewriting the equivalent forms between inverses, that relationship between the function and its inverse. Okay. I usually like to use this to figure out the problems. So I will usually rewrite my problems like that because it helps me to perceive it correctly. Okay. Some people don't have to, but I'm telling you, I'm not that smart. <laughs> I'm just not. I just try and 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 try until I get the dark thing. Okay. So. <laughs> So I have to do things sometimes to make it make sense to me, okay? And you guys are at liberty to do that on your own, if you know yourselves. Whatever you need to do to make the stuff make sense to you, okay? I will show you the little things that I do, but that's all I can do, right? I mean, I can tell you what the book says, which it sounds like a foreign language. You just read the book straight up. It's not easy to read. <laughs> So I try to interpret it for you in the way that I perceived it and what worked for me while I was taking these classes, but that's all I can do, right? That's the whole point of like behind the teaching is to try to give you other ways to see it. Okay. Okay. But important thing is, is we know that when we take the sign of something, right? This guy is an angle, right? When you take the sign of something, you're taking the sign of an angle. Okay. So we know that this value here will be an angle. And we know that when we take the sign, if you remember that graph of sign, it was like um, a wave that went like this, right? And the highest value you could have and the lowest value you could have were one and negative one, right? So I know that when I take the sign of the angle, this value that I get has to be a number between negative one and one, okay? That's why this is there. Now, this is different. Okay, they're restricting the angle. They're not letting you say that when you take the arc sign of, of a value between negative one and one, when you do that, you don't get any angle you want. Okay, and the reason why is because we already know the sign is what, why? 
Is this sine of x y over sine of an angle? Is y over r? Is that right? Right? Okay. So we know that r is always positive, right? Always. So really, you're only concerned with the y value. Okay. And if that y value is positive, then you know that the sine is positive. And if this y value is negative, then you know that the sine is negative. Okay. However, if I'm up here or up here, isn't the y value positive in both of those locations? And if I'm down here, isn't the sign negative in both of those locations? You can't have two answers. Okay, that doesn't help us. You only can have one answer. So what they do is they restrict us and they tell us which quadrants we can use for our answer and which ones we can't. Okay, and they tell us that these quadrants are the ones where you're going to get your answer. So that when you're doing the sign inverse, you will never get an answer in these two quadrants ever. Okay, you have to get from negative pi over two, which is down here, pi over two in the negative direction, and pi over two in the positive direction. So it has to be somewhere in here. Okay, that's what that restriction is telling us up there. Okay. So we know that this value right here is going to be a decimal, or it could be one, or it could be negative one. But usually it's a decimal. Um, and then we know that when we're done, that we're going to get a number that's over here in one of these two quadrants. Okay. So don't pick answers that are over here. Okay. Now, this one says, if possible, find the exact value of each expression. So it's saying, excuse me, saying arc sine of negative one half. Okay. So for me, I write it like this. I say arc sine of negative one half equals what? I have no idea. I put a question mark. You can put a variable if you want to. And then if I rewrite it using that inverse definition, I'm saying the sign of what? equals negative one half. And this helps me a little bit better to be able to tell that, okay? Because I can go look at my little chart that I had on that note sheet, right? And go look and see which angles had sine of negative one half. Now, oh God, I can't even continue anymore because I have not shown y'all how to do a unit circle yet, have I? Not and I need you to know how to do that. Okay, so er, I put the brakes on this real quick and I'm going to show you how to do the unit circle. Okay, okay, does anybody remember? I think I'm going to go back, 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 back in the book because there was that chart of common angles and I took away all of those sheets. Um, I think it was back in the or I sent it electronically actually, so you also had it. This one, this is what I have on the note sheet. Remember that? Okay. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to build off of it. Okay. And so you can construct this anytime you want, or you can just have one there for you to look at. You can download one on the internet, I promise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this big enough so that I can write everything that I want to write in it without having to squish too small. Okay. I'm going to try my super hardest to draw a circle. Nothing quite so I can use that circle, but I'm not. Can't draw running you right now, so it's like a minute or something. I'm trying. Okay, good enough. <laughs> now, we know that this here is zero. Um, it's zero degrees or 360 degrees. It's also zero radians or two pi radians, right? You know that much. We also know, we also know that this one is 90 degrees, right? This is a 90 degree angle or pi over two in radians. We know over here is 180 degrees which is the same as pi. 
and over here is 270 degrees, which is the same as 3 pi over 2. Now, there are basically two unit circles in one picture that I have to draw. Okay. The first one is for me to cut up the whole circle into fourths. Okay. Or cut this up into fourths. One pi, I have to cut it up into four pieces. It's already cut in half by that one, right? Isn't this whole pi, right? Because that's a pi unit, right? So this one pi is already cut in half, is it not? I'm going to cut it in half again as best as I can to make my four pi slices, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom. I'm going to cut this one in half and that one in half. And now I'm going to label it. This is going to be pi over four, because that's one fourth of a pi, right? This should be two fourths of a pi. But what is two fourths reduced? It's just one, one half, right? So we have just pi over two. Then over here, I'm going to go three pi over four. And then the last slice would be four pi over four, which reduces to just pi. Then I have five pi over four, and then six pi over four, which reduces to this, seven pi over four, and then eight pi over four reduces to two pi. Okay. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the sine and cosine information for this point here. So sine, Cosine relates to the x value, right, because it's x over r. And sine relates to the y value because it's y over r, right? So for the, it's always going to be the sine value first and then the cosine value, okay? So the sine value of pi over 4 is actually square root of 2 over 2. Oh, I did that backwards. I said one thing and then I wrote down another. Horrible. Cosine is x over r, and sine is y over r. So the cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of pi over 4, it happens to be the same thing, square root of 2 over 2. So when you see all these points on the unit circle, understand that the x value is the cosine value, okay? And the y value is the sine value. You have to know that, okay? X is the cosine, y is the sine. Now, I'm going to use these same coordinates to find all these other weird ones in the same kind of position, okay? Because if I'm over here, I have the same height, don't I, as that one? If my circle was proper, but right? <laughs> <laughs> so I will have the same y value at this point. So I will have square root of 2 over 2. And I also should have the same width. As far out as I go at x here, it should be the same width there, the same length. What's the difference, though? It's going to be a negative x value now, right? So this should be negative square root of 2 over 2. What are the signs if you're in this quadrant, in this quadrant? They're both negative. And then what are the signs in this quadrant? Who's the negative one? The y. So we have square root of 2 over 2 and then negative square root of 2 over 2. So that's one. We already know these guys. We already know this one. If we, we're talking about what's called a unit circle. And they call it unit circle because the radius is one. Okay. So if I'm on here and I know the radius is one, then I know that this measurement is one, right? So this plot, this point is one, zero. This one is also the radius. So it's zero, positive one. This point here is negative one, zero. And this point here is zero, a negative. 
We've got a lot of it, okay? Now the other circle, I told you it was two on top of each other. I'm gonna have to do it in another color so that it stands out, okay? I'm gonna choose pink just to break. So let's start out. Now, I've done the pi over four, the pi over two, the pi, the three pi over two. Those are all taken care of. These guys are missing, aren't I? I don't have those on my unit circle yet, okay? So if I go with the bigger denominator, that's the denominator that I need to use to cut up my pi, okay? So I've got to cut up my pi into six pieces now, okay? So if this is one pi, it's already cut in half, and now each of these halves need three slices. So I'm trying my best, but I'm gonna go here and go there, okay? That creates one slice here, one slice between the two pink lines, and then one slice between the pink line and the y-axis, right? And I'm gonna do the same over here. And then the same in the other direction. Again, I try to use a different color just so it can stand out. So it looks weird, but this is zero. This is one pi over six. This is two pi over six, which reduces to pi thirds. This one is three pi over six. But three pi over six reduces to pi over two. This one is four pi over six, which reduces to pi over three. Five pi over six does not reduce. And then six pi over six is just pi, right? And now here we have seven pi over six, eight pi over six is four pi over three. Nine pi over six reduces to three halves. 10 pi over six reduces to five pi over three. Here we have 11 pi over six. And then finally 12 pi over six, which is the same as two pi. Okay. So your axes are actually on both of those circles, right? This spot, this spot, this spot, and this spot was on both of the circles. The one I drew in pencil and the one in pink. Okay. So now I'm going to use the information for these two points to create everything else, okay? So let's see what we got for pi over 6. The cosine, which is the x value, is this one. And then the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Now for pi over 3 on this chart, the cosine is 1 half and the sine is square root of 3 over 2. And then it's just a matter of changing the sign, right? Okay. If I didn't have this, okay, this the the fourths, the fourths are easy because they're all square root of two over two, right? Right? Square root of two over two, square root of two over two, square root of two over two, all of them, right? Those are easy to remember. The pi over six and the pi over three, those are real easy to get backwards, aren't they? Because they're the same thing but the opposite, right? If I don't have this chart, and let's say I'm not using my calculator because I'm just truly trying to remember, okay? How would you know which one's gonna have the square root of three over two as the x value versus the one half as the x value? Notice where they're located. If I bring this down to the x-axis and I bring this down to the x-axis, this point has a smaller x value, doesn't it? And this point has a larger x value. They have the same denominator, don't they? So whoever's got the smaller numerator is gonna go here for the x value, and whoever's got the larger numerator is going to be here for this x value, okay? And between one and square root of three, which one's bigger? Square root of three is bigger. Square root of three is actually one point something, 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 right? Okay. I don't have my, I don't have my calculator. 
So let's see, three square root of that. C is 1.7 something or another. So that is a little bit bigger than one, right? Okay. So that's why this one is out further. So that's pi over six should have a bigger x value. Okay. If you ever get confused on which one's supposed to have the one half or the square root of three over two, whichever one is furthest out, that's the one that's going to have the square root of three over two as an x. Okay. Now, once you know these, it's just a matter of finding their brothers or sisters, whatever you want to call them, okay? So notice this one has the same y value as that one, right? Okay, so this one's going to have those same numbers, but what are the signs going to be? Who's going to be negative? The x should be negative, right, in this quadrant? We're going to put that negative there. And then if I go down here, look, this guy's got the same x value, doesn't it? Right? So then this one's going to have those same coordinates. And then if I map it across again, it's making a big square, aren't you? Right? So if I map across this way, those have the same y values. Oops, I should have put a negative x, right? I should have a negative y over there. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the pi over 3. So I'm making a big box. This is more going to be like a long rectangle, right? So we're going to go over here. And at this point, if my circle was better, it would have landed right there where it's supposed to. But this one will be the 1 half and the square root of 3 over 2. But the x needs to be negative. Then if I trace downward, I can get to the 4 pi over 3. So that has the same values. But in this quadrant, you have both negative. And then I go back over to 5 pi over 3. Same values. But the y is negative in this quadrant. You can build it. You never have to like memorize every single one. You can just memorize one quadrant and then just map all the rest of it out. Okay. The reason why I want to use this is because when I see that problem that we were working on that said the sign of what gives me negative one half. I need to be looking on this chart and I know that the sign is the y values, right? And so then all I need to do is go look and find where is the y value negative one half. And I actually have two places. I have here and, did I do that wrong? I didn't do that wrong. That's supposed to be double. Let's see, here and here. Remember, guys, we're gonna catch those we get those points. And by the way, I did not add those points on this test, but I'm gonna do that. I have a little notepad in my office. I don't have Jonathan in this spot, but I think to add a point on this test. Okay. So I actually have two faces, right? With the y value of negative one half but it's important that only one of them is my answer. Right, because we know that for art sign, it has to live over here, right? The answer has to be over here. So it is going to be like a pi over six. I wouldn't know that unless I use my calculator and a lot of the problems are gonna say don't use the calculator. So if I can't use the calculator, you're supposed to use this table and then just magically know where everything goes. I'm showing you the magic, right? <laughs> so you should magically know where everything goes, but it doesn't, you have to see it once, I think, in order for you to know how to go there. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and I'm actually gonna save this page because I don't want to have to do that again. It takes a long time, right? I mean, it's great once you do it once, it's handy to have it there, but it's a lot of work to get there. 
But if you do practice that, that is really, really good. Just FYI, I may make it like a always problem this test. I didn't warn you. <laughs> okay. So for this one, yes, it is going to be 11 pi over 6 because that's the only one that has the sign, the y value, as negative one half. There's one over there, but that's my guy. And we're going to take this quadrant over here. So then I'm going to say that the question mark is 11 pi over 6. Okay. Now that we have this, though, we can kind of progress through the rest of the problems a lot faster. Got all the hard work done. Okay, so for this one, they're basically saying the sine of what will give me square root of three over two. So I'll let you look at that chart, look at that unit circle, and then anybody wants to guess, think they know what the answer is. Uh, Pi over three? I think it is, yep. Because you're supposed to be looking at the y value, right? Sine means y value. And you do have another y value with square root 3, but that one's not positive, is it? Okay, so it is going to be pi over 3. Good. And then this last one, that's a trick question. Because we just told you that that number in here has to be between negative 1 and 1. Is this between negative 1 and 1? No. So there's no, it doesn't exist. I think they make you type B and E. Does not exist. Okay. Because of the rule that when it does. It's because when you do take the sine of an angle, the highest it can be is one, and the lowest it can be is negative one. So there's no angle that when I take the sine of it, I will get two. Okay, it's just not. Okay, let's go see what the other page has in store for us. Oh, yeah, it was a bracket. You don't know this much our test. That was my It's not too bad, okay? It's just art stuff. So let's switch it up. Remember, you can say sine of y equals x, right? Same as meaning, right? It's just the other uh, representation of it. What I can do is I can just graph sine. You already know the values. You already know. You know that the period is what for sine? Let's see if you remember. What is it? 2 pi over two. b. 2 pi over b. But what is b in this case? Look here, inside there. It's just 1. So it's just 2 pi then, right? So my period is 2 pi. And then if I wanted to do my increments, I would have to do 2 pi over what? Four increments. Good. And so I just get pi over 2 as my measurement, right? And we already know that we're supposed to start when this angle is 0 and then stop when we get to the end of the period, right? So we have 0, then the increment would make this pi over 2, then pi. And I'm putting my letters backwards and into it again. Notice what's inside here. The y is inside there, right? So this should be y. So basically swap them. Because I know when you graph sine, the regular sine, it was the other way around, wasn't it? It was x on the left side and y on the right side. And just swap them, like literally all they did. The sine of zero is zero. The sine of pi over two is one. The sine of pi is zero. And the sine of three pi over two is negative one. And that's one cycle. Now, these are going to give me points. Okay. This gives me zero, zero for my x and for my y. This gives me one for x and pi over 2 for 0. This gives me 0 for x and pi for y. Negative 1 for x 
and the read by over two. So just like you learned in college algebra, inverses just basically invert the x's and the y's, don't they? And that's exactly what happened here. In a regular sine function, these would all be my x values, and these would have all been my y values. And now they're backwards because we're talking about the inverse. Okay. So if I had to graph this, we have zero, zero. I like to have these in decimals just because they help me to eyeball. No pi is about like 3.14, right? We all know that one. But what is pi over 2? Pi over 2 is about 1.57. And then 3 pi over 2. Is about 4.71. Just to give me an idea of where it is, right? So I have x value of 1, x value of negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I'm just going to draw one cycle. It's about right there somewhere. Zero. And one, two, three, and then one, two, four, somewhere up there. And negative one in one, two, three, four, seven might be somewhere right there. Now you can't really see. I miss somebody. No, I didn't. Zero, zero. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. It looks like a really great graph, right? It's basically going to translate to a curve that kind of looks right. I can't keep going, but what does it look like? It just looks like, like it's sideways, doesn't it? Right? It's just like, instead of it being horizontal, now it looks like the same curve, but vertical. Okay. So that's very, very, very similar. Not that you ever have to graph these things. I promise you, other than this question, you probably won't. <laughs> you probably won't. I don't know why. I think they wanted this to establish. For you to remember the relationship between the inverses and regular functions, you just swap the x and the y. That was the whole purpose, that probably be there. Okay, now that we talked about inverse sine, now we can talk about inverse cosine. If the process is the same, there is one big difference. Notice what the y value can be here. It's not between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 anymore. Now it's between 0 and pi. So which quadrants are those? They're not these two quadrants. Zero to pi is these two quadrants, isn't it? Okay. So be careful when you're doing those inverses, make sure you're looking at the correct quadrants to get your answers. Okay. Tangent is exactly the same as sine. Tangent will be the exact same. It'll be these quadrants over here, just like sine. Cosine is the one that's different. So when I go to do this problem here, when I go to do this problem, I'm going to say the cosine of what equals square root of 2 over 2. And so if I look at my chart, you're only allowed to look at the top part of the circle. Where do you have what value am I looking for here? X value or Y value? X value this time. So where is the X value of positive square root of 2 over 2? At pi over 4. The other square root of 2 over 2, X is negative, isn't it? Okay, so it has to be this one. 
Now for tangent, we're going to say the tangent of what equals zero. You have to remember what tangent means. Tangent means sine over cosine. And here's another little extra bit of information. The only way that this fraction can equal zero is if which one of these equals zero? If the, not the cosine. If cosine zero, what happens? The whole thing's undefined. But if the top is zero, what happens to the fraction? It becomes zero. So this means basically where is the sine equal to zero? That one was tricky. I had to really, really think about that one. Tangents are tricky. Maybe can look up here. Yeah, I mean, you could be on the axis itself, right? It does have equal bars, right? So it could be zero or it could be pi. Who is it? Who has the y value? Sign is y value. Who has the y value of zero? It actually, you know what? I think I might have an error there. Let me check. Because it's only supposed to be one, right? Which means one of those might not have an equal bar. And I might just accidentally put an equal bar. But I think they prefer zero than pi. But let me make sure before I say. No, I was right. It does say either one. So then this one, you do have a choice. So that means this could equal what angle is this with the y value of zero? What angle is it? Zero. Or that also has the y value of zero, doesn't it? So, or it could be pi. Just that way, on the web design, it will tell you which one it wants. Okay? Pay attention because they may say something like within a certain domain and they might not put the bars on both of them. Okay? okay. So it's there. Ah, yes, thank you. You're very smart. Ha <laughs> he caught it. Why can it not be this one? That's in the other quadrant, is it not? Right? Tangent's supposed to live over here, isn't it? So yes, we were looking for sine, right? Because we were dissecting this and trying to analyze it, right? But when we got down to it and we got zero or pi, we did this part correctly, right? There's nothing wrong with doing that part. However, when we did this, actually, no, you can't even do that. Because when you take sine, which quadrants are you supposed to be looking at? Just this side, right? So we should not have gotten pi. I bring for it. Thank you, Terry. I'm going to give you a point. Okay, so we're going to catch. Okay, this one's a little bit different. I'm gonna go through that same process. So I'm going to say the tangent of what equals negative one. And we know that tangent is sine over cosine. But from here, my analysis is gonna go in a different direction because I don't have zero, right? Here I had zero. So I analyzed it. Well, what would have, what kind of relationship needs to happen here in order for me to get zero in this fraction, right? And then we figured out that the numerator would have to be zero. Fantastic. Over here, though, we need to figure out how that ratio is going to become negative one. The only way that that can happen is if you have the same number here and here, but they have opposite signs, right? Because if the top is negative and the bottom is positive, I will get a negative one or vice versa. 
the top is positive and the bottom is negative, I'll still get a negative one. But it has to be the same number over the same number. Okay? With opposite values. A little tiny for you guys in the back, sorry. So we're going to go to the chart. Now, remember we're talking about tangent, right? So we pointed it out. So make sure you're only looking on this side of the circle for your answers. Okay? So we'll cover that side up. If I'm only looking here, where do we have where the y value and the x value are the same number but opposite signs? Where does that happen? It does happen here. Notice the same number but opposite signs, right? And so then that means that the question mark is 7 pi over 4. We have to think outside the box a little bit for the tangent ones. Okay, so be very careful with those tangent ones. Now, yay, we just start reading properly. I don't have my fancy one, but I'm going to tell you how to use it. Okay. For mine, and you might have a different calculator than the one I recommended. If you do, normally you have to hit the second button and then whatever trig function you need to get the inverse trig. You see the inverse trig in green in there? Okay. On your calculator, um, it's different. Do you have your, maybe like to show it real quick and I'll take it right back. Um, but if you, what happened? There we go. For yours, I'm going to scoot up a little bit. Notice that you have sine and inverse sine together on the same button, right? It's because if you hit it once, sine will pop up. And if you hit it a second time, then the sine inverse will pop up. Okay, so I'm just going to do it real quick. So what are we doing? Arc tan, which means I'm going to hit tan once and then I'm going to hit tan again, right? And it gives you that inverse option, okay? That's what I do. Do you want to wait? Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, so for this one, my calculator is different. So I'm going to have to hit second and then 10. Oh, this calculator is like totally different. First off, there's a problem, isn't there? Radiance. This does not have a little degree symbol, does it? So it's in radiance. Now, if you have a fancy scientific calculator, normally you can type in it exactly like that. You can hit the 10 inverse button on your calculator and then type this number on the inside, close it up, and hit enter. And you don't have a problem. This calculator is like elementary scientific calculator. So I have to do it backwards. I have to type in 8.45 negative, and then I can hit the tangent function. It's just the way the calculator is. Your calculator, if you have that one, is so much nicer. It's like straightforward. These ones are backwards. So try it in your calculator and see if you get this number. Normally, the website will tell you how much to um, round it. It doesn't tell me here, so I'm just going to use three decimal places. This one, I have to do the sign button now. Again, no degree symbol, so 0 0.2447. And inverse sine, I get 0 0.2472. It's just coincidence that it's almost the same. And the last one is also in radians because there's no degrees. But I can tell you right now that was bad, right? Yeah. You're not supposed to have a number bigger than one for cosine, OK? We know sine and cosine live between one and negative one. So it's no way to be two. But let's put it in the calculator and see what the calculator says. It tells me error. Okay. And so then that one you know it does not exist. Why did I give myself so much space? <laughs> That's okay though. Okay, so this is just kind of like a little summary here. 
but we're actually going to talk about the properties of the inverse function. So I put it in words right here, and then I put it in images right there. The same thing we already know about the sines and the cosines, right? So we know that our answers are going to be over here for sine, for arc sine, and we know our answers are going to be up here for arc cosine, and over here for arc ten. Now what they're saying is that remember what inverses are supposed to do. They're supposed to undo each other, right? So an arc sign should undo a regular sign. Sign inverse should undo a regular sign. Okay. And so that's what this is saying. It's saying the sign and the arc sign will basically cancel each other out and you'll get just X. Okay. And the opposite. If the arc sign is on the outside and the regular sign is on the inside, it doesn't matter. They're going to cancel each other out and you're just going to end up with that. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, then the same thing for cosines, these guys will cancel, we'll just get x, these guys will cancel, we'll just get y. <laughs> okay, and then the same for touches. So let's go see how this is going to pan out. <laughs> Okay, so what about number five? Was there a restriction on tangent? Let's look at that little table again. And that table you will have. I'm going to say five. Excuse me. This little number in here, right, which, yeah, I have tangent on the outside. Notice on my problem, I have tangent on the outside and arc 10 on the inside. So if I go here, I have this situation right here. Notice it says that X is any real number, right? It doesn't have to be between negative one and one. It could be any real number. So it's okay for tangent to have a negative five. Okay, that is a okay. And because it's a okay, then I know that I can actually just cancel these guys out and just end up with that number, whatever it was. So these guys basically just cancel each other out and you end up with negative five. <laughs> Excuse me. Now the other one, we have arc sign on the outside and sign on the inside. So I'm going to go here in this, this case. Our sign on the outside and sign on the inside. <laughs> but this number, <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm <coughs> sorry. <coughs> 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 <laughs> okay, this number has to be between what and what? Is that going to break there? Negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, right? Is what we have that between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? Remember which quadrant that corresponds to. <coughs> For sign, which quadrants are you looking at? One and four. One and four. And so is five pi over three in quadrant one or in quadrant four? Yes. It. So then that means I can just cancel these guys out. And you end up with five pi over three. But almost, okay, you can't actually equal 5 pi over 3 because 5 pi over 3 is not in this interval, right? 
So you were right in the fact that not really, it's not in there, right? It is in the quadrant, is it not? Right? But it's not an actual value in there. However, <coughs> does it have, oh, what was the word? I can't remember the words. Does it have a terminal angle? In another angle that's equivalent to this that is in between here. Right? Can I get to that if I went in the negative direction? Can I get to that spot? I could. But how far would I have to go in that negative direction? I would have to go in that negative direction of pi over six units. So this guy is actually equivalent to negative pi over six. Okay. And I only know that from my increments, not pi over six, that's the wrong number, isn't it? This is pi over six, right? This is pi over three measurement, right? And I need that measurement to get here. And that guy is in this range, isn't it? Okay. So this is going to be my answer. So we knew the location, we just had to find another representation for that location. Now let's look at cosine. Cosine on the outside and cosine inverse on the inside is the same as this. <laughs> so the X has to be between negative one and one. Is that value between negative one and one? Pi is how much? 3.14, right? It's too big, right? So this one you would say, it says, is it possible? So I would just say not possible. Or the computer says to type the in and type the in. Whatever the computer says to type. But you just can't do it, right? These are different. Me, I don't know, they're about the same level of difficulty, but they're different. Um, those are different because they don't cancel each other, do they? They're completely two different trig functions. So for these, what you have to do is you basically have to do one and then the other. And for order of operations, what order are we supposed to go in? From the inside out, right? Always go from the inside out. So for both of these problems, you basically have to figure out this first, and then you can figure out whatever the outside function is. Okay. So I'm gonna put this in pink here, and I'm basically saying the cosine of what equals two thirds. Okay. Now these are different because these are not common angles. Again, I repeat, these are not common names. Do you see a two thirds on here? No, right? Do you see a negative three fifths or even just a three fifths? No, right? If they're not on a unit circle, you have to go back to triangles. That's trig. It's either a circle or a triangle, okay? So you have to go back to what you know about the triangles. So if I were to go and create this, remember that cosine? It's x over r, right? So if my x is a positive 2, and I'm talking about cosine, r cosine, right? So I have to be in which quadrants? I have to be up here, right? I have to, I don't have a choice about that. But we're talking about r cosine. So when I try to grab a positive 2x, I am over here, but since I know I have to be in this quadrant, I know that I'm up here. Okay. I don't, I can't be down here. It is not an option for our cosine. Okay. So I know that if I create a right triangle right here, 
right? There's my right triangle. I'll put it in a different color so it will stand out. Okay, this is the x value, which is the measurement of two. This would be the radius on my circle, wouldn't it? Okay. So this is going to be my three. The only thing I'm missing is I don't know what the y value is, right? But I do know that that angle that I'm trying to look for is right here. So they're saying the cosine of this angle, it should be x over r, and it is x over the r. How do you figure out what the y is? So we have one leg squared plus the other leg squared equal to the hypotenuse squared. So then if I minus four on both sides, I get five. And if I take the square root, I get plus or minus square root of five, but which one is my side? Look where I'm at, which one is mine? Am I supposed to have a positive y value or am I supposed to have a negative y, y value? Hmm. In quadrant one, the y is up, right? So I'm supposed to have a positive y value. So my y value is square root of five, positive. So then now if I want to find the tangent of this angle, Right? Once I know what that is, I can find the tangent of it. And we know that tangent is y over x. All right. Or I'm going to make this stuff up. The cotangent is x over y. So, so then my y is square to 5 positive, and my x is 2. And so this is perfect. I erased this question mark just because I didn't want a question mark here and a question mark there and make anything get the same thing. So now this one I can do it the same way. But now we're talking about arc sign. Where does arc sign live? What is four? What is four? It's over here, right? So we know that the r, the r has to be that positive five. So then we know that this y has to be the negative. So then which quadrant am I going to put my dot? Am I putting it in quadrant one or am I putting it in quadrant four? <laughs> In four down here, right? If I draw my triangle, there's my little right angle. We know that the radius there is going to be five. We know that the y value is negative three. And we know that the angle is right here close to the origin, right? And so we, again, we know that the sign should be opposite over hypotenuse. Isn't that exactly what's here? Opposite over hypotenuse. So everything is matching. We had it mapped correctly. Well, what are they asking me to find? Cosine. They want cosine of that angle, which is usually x over r. I know what r is, but do we know what x is? But well, we can figure it out, right? So let's say one leg squared plus another leg squared equal to the hypotenuse squared. So then if I minus nine, I get actually 16. And if I take the square root, you do get plus or minus four. But which one do I choose? I'm in quadrant four. So what's the x value there? Positive. So we have to choose positive four, which means our ratio is going to be four, positive four over five. You see why I need you to know that stuff that was on the last test? I'm going to keep using it a lot. 
and we're building a building. So not only do we have to consider that information from before, now we have to consider even more information now, right? Okay. Now we're beginning on time. I don't even know when this clock is. Does it end at 2.45 or 2.50? I don't even remember. <laughs> It's 245, right? <laughs> Let me see. I don't remember. Um, um, it is 250. I bet I'm trying to like, keep it last second. I just want to see how far I can go or get close to that point. Um, I think I'll just finish this and then I'm just going to be 6.7 for the next class. Like I told you guys, right? I am not trying to rush through anything. Okay. I'm just trying to go at our own pace for the class goes. Okay. I'm not trying to just like zoom through it all to be done. Okay. So number seven says write an algebraic expression that is equivalent to each expression. Huh. Oh, I know what they want. Can we use the unit circle? It has an X in it. Do you see X's on these cosines here? There's no X's there, right? We can't use the unit circle. I told you guys, if you can't use the unit circle, what do you do? Triangles, exactly. So we are gonna have to build a triangle. Okay, just like before, I'm saying the cosine. This can be written out. Cosine of what angle is going to give me this 3x, right? Same thing as before, but it has to be a fraction, right? Because it's supposed to be um, x over r, right? And in order for it to be a fraction, you can just put it over one, right? So if I call that, now be careful here because I'm gonna put quotes around X. That's the X value as in the coordinate system, right? It's not the same X that's there. This is just an unknown number, okay? So I wrote it a little bit different so you don't get confused, okay? This is the X in the table, X and Y, right? This is just the variable that they chose to use in the problem, okay? But it's supposed to be X over R. So in this case, your X value is going to be that 3X and your R is going to be that little invisible one. And it's telling me that X has to be in this. So if I draw my coordinate system, okay, and Um, I have to be between zero and something, right? And if I multiply it by three, if I multiply this by three, I still have zero, don't I? If I multiply x by three, it's three x. And if I multiply this by three, I get one, right? So I know that this x value, right? Whatever this x value is, has to be between zero and one. So here's a zero x value, here's a one x value. I'm somewhere in there. I don't know where I'm just gonna draw that. And I know that r has to be one. And so I'm gonna draw the right triangle. It's getting kind of crap, I should have drawn it bigger. But the little question mark is the angle right there at the origin. Your angles are always close to the origin. And I know that the X value can be written as three X. How do I figure out a way to write the Y value? Can I use the Pythagorean theorem even those variables in there? Can you put three X in the Okay, so we're going to do one leg squared. Oops, that's not a leg. 
we're gonna do one leg squared. And just out of convenience, I'm gonna do y because I am trying to find the y coordinate, right? And then the hypotenuse squared. So 3x squared is actually 9x squared. y squared is just y squared. And 1 squared is just 1. Then I get y squared equals 1 minus 9x squared. And then I get y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 9x squared. Now, because of the quadrant that I'm in, right? Because of these boundaries that put me in this quadrant, for our cosine, I know I had to be in one of these two quadrants. And according to those boundaries, it put me in this one, right? If I'm here, is my y value going to be positive or negative? So that's what I'm going to use for this measurement right here, right? This, this mean. It's an expression, the square root of 1 minus 9x squared. Now, what they're asking me to find is the sine of that angle. And we know that the sine of that angle is y over r. And so y is this weird expression, and r is just 1. So we end up with this expression as our answer. Everything is exactly the same process. It's just confusing because you can't get confused with the x variable and then the x value. Okay. So that's why I tried to like put quotes around it, do something to make sure that it stood out that they're not exactly the same thing. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we actually isn't. That's not nice. I want to do something different. It <laughs> gave me the same thing. It did give me the same thing. Oh no, I made an error. It really don't matter. But this, oh, this is printing. It's supposed to just be a less than, not a less than or equal to. It really won't matter. It just means I can't be at one, right? Because when I multiply everybody at three, this is still zero when I multiply by three. This is still three x when I multiply by three. And that's still one when I multiply by three. So my x value is still in between zero and one, it just can't be one, okay? But it's essentially the same image because aren't I still doing our cosine of three x? So it's the exact same triangle. I'm not going to have to redo the whole triangle all over again. Kind of wanted to, just so you have another example, but it's the same thing. So if I'm trying to do cotangent of this angle, whatever that angle is, cotangent is x over y. Well, I only know I can ask one better. Okay, so we know the x value, right? The x value is 3x. And we know that the y value is this expression. And now we know why they don't have a bar there. Because if I plug in one third here, I'm going to get zero in the denominator. So that's why they told us we can't have one third. Okay. You can't simplify that. You could rationalize it. You could. You could get rid of the radical downstairs, but you don't have to. The computer will take that. If you rationalize it, it could look like this. But it doesn't simplify any more than that. Okay. You can never take that radical and just like squish it into each term individually. You can't do that. Okay. So you couldn't say it was just one minus three X. You can't do that. A lot of stuff going on with this one. A lot of different ways to think about things. Okay. I would suggest you try to go in there and do that 6.6 .6 homework. 
Um, the cool thing about having a class only two days a week is you do have like two days to do like that one homework assignment, and then the next one around you have like a whole weekend to do the next um, homework assignment, right? So I want you to go in there and do the 6.6. .6. Do it sooner rather than later, because if you wait too long, you will forget whatever it was we talked about. Okay? If you do forget, remember to always rewatch the lectures and do it. Okay? So fast forward, do whatever you want with it. Okay? Other than guys, you guys are free to go. If you have any questions for me, I'm here. You guys have a great day. Stop